There's an old saying among potato growers is that uh, a good rotation is a thousand years of sagebrush and uh, one year of potatoes. And whereas that's not possible, obviously, then we do next best, and that is uh, spending the time and the number of years we need to to prepare that ground so that when we do plant a potato crop, which is very expensive to grow, we know then that uh, we've given it every chance to succeed and have a premium quality potato. We recognize that there's a brotherhood of sorts among, among growers of potatoes. On the other hand, uh, we also recognize the fact that we're uh, in total competition one with another, and that those people who buy our products uh, examine virtually every potato storage and try to select the, the premium quality potatoes. In the potato industry, people are willing to pay for a premium potato, but uh, a poor quality potato is uh, really unmarketable. So it's a very serious consideration that we take the time to prepare for that potato crop. And so what we do is uh, spend anywhere from two to three or four years preparing the ground prior to planting the potatoes. And this, is, this crop is one of them. It's a wheat crop and it's uh, not a lucrative crop, but it's a very good crop to prepare for the potato crop that's yet to come. All the preparations we can make uh, almost uh, daily, uh, we do in order to assure quality. And uh, we have to work hard at it. Otherwise, we have a, a product that no one wants to buy. One of the things that we've learned over the years, and I'm not young anymore, is the fact that uh, Mother Nature is terribly unforgiving. And if we violate her rules, then she's very severe. And uh, those who try to cheat her and uh, ask for leniency are the ones who ultimately fail. Some years she may give us a little break, but if you count on it, you're a fool. You, you count only on your ability to get the crop out uh, before Mother Nature is going to come and take it from you. The temptation to, uh, to do things easier, quicker, is sometimes there, but we've learned that we can't do it. We have to put the time and effort and money into to having machinery and people prepared and make the sacrifices that's necessary to get it done in that time frame. We have three or four years of preparation for one crop of potatoes and then we have a window of three weeks to get that crop out of the ground and under cover before Mother Nature plays tricks on us. We try to maximize our uh, growing season by waiting as long as we dare, but we also know that uh, we're tickling the dragon's tail, so to speak, and so we make every preparation we can to let the crop grow as long as we can, and then once that's over, and then we get into harvest, it's uh, terribly important that we go not night and day, but 18 hours a day in order to beat that potential cold that could destroy the crop, even though it's in the ground. It's a pretty tough schedule and pretty important that we're fully prepared and competent and, and, uh, and get the job done timely or we could lose it. F virtually three or four years of work. In this business, we've learned uh, some lessons and some, some of them in a hard way that we can't uh, take shortcuts or try to cheat as it relates to a harvest time. All the advances we see in irrigation, in equipment, uh, in technology, in seed, in fertilization uh, is not a substitute for other things. Anytime we violate uh, the law of the harvest, so to speak, then we're doomed to failure in spite of all the, the advancements that we see come along. We try to make the best use we can of uh, new technology and equipment that fits our needs, but we have also learned that it is no substitute for 
good sound decision making and preparation which we've always relied on and, and, and we will always rely on it. It's more fundamental than changes in technology and equipment. I sense sometimes that there's a, a growing mentality in this country and maybe in the world that great things are going to be accomplished through advancements in technology and communications and computers to the point that the human element is not important and I think nothing can be further from the truth that uh, we succeed only to the point that we develop the ability to change with changing times to be prepared to resist the temptation to make shortcuts in our own preparation and uh, knowledge and uh, I think the moment we rely on technology to substitute, we make grave mistakes. By the very nature of farming, we have no roof over our head. We take whatever Mother Nature gives to us. We can't store good weather. We have to use it when it's good. We can't control the elements. We like the life. We think it builds character in people.